Hi, um, good evening everyone. My name is Edmund and today um, I'll, I'll be talking about hooks, an introduction to WordPress development. Um, it, it probably, I hope it's not as scary as it sounds. It's, uh, I'll try and make it less um, tacky and more of um, hopefully uh, the takeaway, main takeaway is for you all to understand why WordPress is such a powerful and extendable um, software. Okay, um, a bit of myself, about myself, I'm a developer. I've been working with um, WordPress for about, I think four to five years. I'm uh, working at this local agency called Nerd Media, where we focus, focus on um, WordPress sites and we build web applications as well. So, um, a bit of my background, I studied uh, internet and multimedia back in school when I was in poly. Didn't really like it. <laughs> maybe because of the exams or uh, projects. We in school just want to have fun. So after that, I didn't expect myself to um, continue programming or web-related stuff after I finished school. And then somehow or another, I managed to, I'm, I, at first I got into um, project management um, with WordPress sites. That was my first encounter with WordPress. I think it was back in Word version three or something. And then, Slowly, I begin to, um, I mean, when I'm managing developers, they, a lot of issues, um, I wish that I can solve myself, I don't have to wait for them. So slowly, I went to do some research and then learn about um, the basic HTML and CSS, things that I didn't learn in school because back then, we were still using like Photoshop to slice all the images, very old school. So from then on, I decided, I actually realized that, oh, actually, it's not so, it's not so bad, it's quite fun. And then um, slowly, I, gradually, I got I got gotten more into WordPress development, um, learned the, all the core concepts, and so right now I'm a, a developer doing applications and websites um, solely on WordPress. Okay, so um, maybe just a show of hands. How many of you have not heard of the term hooks? Okay, and how many of you are actually looking to go into WordPress development? Okay, okay, that's good. I was, I was afraid that no one is gonna raise up their hands and then I'll probably just end my talk. But, um, so, <coughs> what is hook? Um, is this, I'll just go through some um, definitions, probably you guys will not understand, but at the end, I'll, I'll show you guys some uh, code examples. Hopefully, it will give you guys a clearer picture. So, this is a um, generic term. Hi. This is a generic term to describe this place in, um, a co in, in the code base to, that allows um, custom functions from outside the application to get hooked into the program. For example, in WordPress code base, we have this, um, imagine this huge function that uh, creates a post, for example. And then at the end of the, 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 the post, the function, they, they place a hook over there. So what this hook does is it allows um, developers, plugin developers, to create their own functions um, to hook into that area of the code. So when the code uh, gets um, processed, when it reaches that part of the hook, um, all functions attached to the hook will get executed. So, in my opinion, this is one of the most um, important concepts to um, understand when it comes into WordPress development because it is the most common way to interact with um, WordPress. You do not want to modify the, the original files because when you, when you update the software, everything gets um, erased. So hooks is um, extremely important to know when you are looking into doing plugin development or theme development or just basic um, custom changes. Okay, so there are two kinds of hooks. One is the action hook and one is the filter hook. So for action hook, you can think of it as something that allows you to execute functions, do something. It's, about, it's all about doing something. Um, a very good example is when you save a post in, um, in the backend, in the WordPress, you can create a custom function that allows you to send an email to whoever you want when you publish the post. So that is 
an example of an action hook. It, it allows you to do something. In this case, it allows you to send email to the person after you click on um, the post, publish a post. Another example is um, adding a notification bar at the top of maybe your navigation section. So maybe you're running an e-commerce site and you want to add like a promotional bar at the top, 10% off, that kind of stuff. So with this hook, it allows you to place your content above the navigation bar. So if you were to do this and if you were to look into the source code, you will see that there's a hook before they generate that navigation bar. So what the hook does is um, it, it runs the hook first which is where your um, functions get executed. And then after that, it runs the navigation bar. So that's why your, your, your function will appear above um, the section. So for action hooks, we are, um, this are the four, or these are the four functions associated with action hooks, but the two most commonly used ones are do action and act action. So this is something that I will um, run through later at the end. And for today, I will not touch on has action and remove action because I think you don't really need to know these two in order to utilize um, the, this action hook. Okay, and next is um, filter hook. So for actions, we are looking at um, doing something, always um, trying to execute functions. For filter, we are looking to change something. Changing, it's about uh, manipulating or changing data. A very good example is um, your WooCommerce add to cart button. So, because by default you cannot change the text, they don't, have, um, they don't have that option in the admin for you to change the text. So what do you do? I mean, other than install a plugin, you can use a simple hook that allows you to change that add to cart text. Just um, a one-liner one, uh, one -liner for you to make this change. And also, um, another use case is, so imagine you have a blog post, your, the, the, you have a blog post content. And at the end, you want to add um, additional text. For example, you can check if the user is logged in, you want to add the text um, log out. And if the user is not logged in, you want to add the text um, sign up or log in. So with filter, you're actually changing the entire content by appending text to it. So for filters, we have these four functions. And same thing, we are just going to touch on apply filters and add filter. And the other two, we'll um, hopefully touch on it next time. Okay, and so this is just um, to summarize the key differences between actions and filters. For action, like what I mentioned, it's all about executing custom functions, doing something, sending, an, sending a tweet when you publish a post, inserting uh, your custom table, for example, at the, before the footer, or inserting an image after the footer. It's all about doing something. For filters, it's about changing data. Um, you can choose not to change the data as well. Maybe if in your function, if it fails a certain condition, for example, if you're checking, oh, if um, I'm ch I want to change this blog post content only if the ID is one. So if the ID is one, and then your filter will um, fire, and then your content will be changed. But if the ID is not one, it will just return um, the original content. So. Over here I mentioned, for filters, um, we have to return a value because the hook gives you access to the original value. So what you need to do is, no matter whether you're changing it or not, you need to return the value back in your function. And for actions, um, you don't really need to return anything. You can just uh, run your own, um, run your own um, custom features you want, if you want. So over here, function, um, action users do action and act action and filters, apply filters, and add filter. Okay, so I came across this um, analogy on, I think it was wpshout.com. So it describes um, WordPress as, a, as, as this um, large factory for, that generates uh, web pages. And then, so imagine, imagine this factory. It has uh, its own internal um, workers doing some stuff but it doesn't do everything uh, by themselves. Some, most of the stuff, they hire contractors from outside to do it. So these contractors, they, they, don't, they don't belong into the factory. They don't belong inside the factory. They are outside waiting for WordPress to invite them in. And how WordPress invites them in is by using this <laughs> giant hook. So you can imagine this person as uh, maybe a custom function, writing this hook into WordPress to do its stuff. So um, 
This is an example of uh, an action hook after nav menu. So, for example, uh, maybe this, maybe this, in this hook appears in the process where WordPress is creating a navigation menu. So, this hook could be at the end of the of the process. And then, if they want to allow, and if the contractor, if they want to do something after the whole um, creation of, of the menu is done, they can write this hook into the factory. And then this is the name of your custom function, the one that you're attaching to the hook, which gets um, brought into the factory, which, and then it will be executed. So for, for actions, action hook, you'll just, um, you'll just be brought into the factory, and then you just do your own stuff. It's always about doing, executing functions. But for filter hook, it's a bit different. I mentioned that filter hook has to return something because you're given a value. So um, what this hook does, for filter hook, it brings the contractor into in, in between the a line of um, full time workers, so they slot them in, in as part of their process, and then the contractor gets handed the value, the original value. So the maybe the boss can uh, the boss tells him that you can do whatever you want, change whatever you want, but at the end you have to return the value back to me. If not, the whole process will not continue; it will break. So that is the um, what returning value is about when using filter hook. So it depends on what, um, for example, if you use a filter hook in the... For example, Stripe, what, are, what am I returning to that? Stripe? Yes. Um, if for Stripe, I don't think they... I mean, if you have a plugin that uses Stripe, so maybe they allow you to change um, certain, certain data in, uh, in... For example, maybe you want, they allow you to change the text, um, pay now text in Stripe, for example. At the checkout page, you click uh, the button, there's a pay now button, right? Maybe the text, the original text is pay now. And maybe the, filter, the plugin has a filter that allows you to change that text. So you can use the, use the filter and change pay now to, uh, I don't know, let's do it or something. So there are, like in WordPress, there are so many hooks. It allows you to change the blog title, the content, the excerpt, almost everything you can imagine, which is one of the reasons why it's so customizable. So, um, we'll talk about why hooks are so useful and why you should use them and not be like the person. Okay, so um, it's, it's the recommended way to customize and um, extend WordPress. There are other ways as well, including um, creating, overriding your templates in your shell theme. But if you are looking to do, make changes to your site, the first uh, method is to always look and see if there's a hook for it. And it makes it easier to debug as well because every hook is um, it's in charge of a specific process. So imagine if um, your website for the um, block title is not showing correctly, showing some weird characters. So you probably know where to look for it because there's this filter that allows you to manipulate the title. Maybe another plugin that you have is causing some um, changes to it. So at least you know you can narrow down to where to find um, how to debug. And it also reduces the reliability of um, external plugins. So how many of you actually, when you're looking to do something to your site, the first thing that comes to your mind is, um, or the first thing that you ask in a Facebook group is, is there a plugin to do this or do that? <laughs> okay, and then you probably get replies um, from other people saying that, oh yeah, you can download this plugin. Sometimes they even introduce you something that you have to pay, like a premium plugin that does 20 over things, but actually you only need to do one thing. So um, with hooks, you can, Basically, the plugins that you, that you download or you purchase, they are just using the same, same thing. So as a developer, I think the first thing you should um, ask yourself is, instead of, is there a plugin to do this? I think it should, it should be, is there a hook to look into um, to change this, to change that? And um, when you look into, when you are researching on hooks, you'll probably look into the documentation or source code to understand how it works. So when that happens, it gives you a better understanding of how this plugin developer um, is executing certain functions. Why is he placing the hook over there? Every hook is placed strategically at that place. It's not just randomly all over the code. 
So when you read through the source code and, and the documentation, it makes you understand, oh, so this is why the developer um, create a filter for this because he wants, he allow his, 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 uh, he wants to allow other people to change this text. He wants to allow other people to insert certain things at this part of the program. And this will be extremely valuable, especially when you're looking into creating your own themes and plugins in the future. And it also allows for reusable custom functions. So when you create um, hooks, you're using all your custom functions are probably going to be inside your functions.php um, file or inside a small little plugin. So what you can do is, if it's in the plugin, you can just reuse it for every site that you have. For example, for my case, I created this um, simple little plugin that allows me to change the login, the login logo, the WordPress logo. It allows me to replace that logo with um, whatever I want. So I'll just install that plugin into all my client site, and then we'll just replace the logo with the client's logo. Just a simple hook. They allow me to do that. And most importantly, I think it, with hooks, you don't have to touch um, all the WordPress, the, all the core files anymore. Be it WordPress, be it the theme, or the plugins. Because you know when you edit the core files, everything will get erased when you update the software. So this is um, actually is the most important reason why you should use hooks. Because a lot of us are Maybe when we, when we first start out, we are tempted to just go in and edit the file inside. Because it's just one line, I can just change the value and then that's it. But in the future, when you update something and then you realize that, oh, my site is it's broken, why? And then you have to go back to that file and then find out which is the line of code that you actually ed edited. And um, so hopefully I've convinced you so far that Hooks is actually a very useful um, thing to use in WordPress development. And I will show you some um, examples. Hopefully it's not so scary. I, I actually truncated some of the code to make it as short as possible, but still understandable. Okay, so um, this is an example of um, an action hook. This is actually taken from um, the WooCommerce, one of the WooCommerce um, scripts. It's in the thank you page. So this do action is actually the action hook. Um, the first parameter, it it receives is, I should have used this one. Okay, so the first par parameter it receives is the name of the hook. So in this case, it's uh, WooCommerce underscore thank you. And then the second one, it's um, arguments. In this case, it allows, um, it provides the order ID for your custom function. Okay, and we'll get into that uh, in a bit. But this is the most important part of the hook. So if you're looking to insert Okay, so this hook is actually found in this thankyou.php file. Okay, what all this, um, what this entire condition does is it checks if the order is successful. So if the order is successful, it will um, show you the order table. I I'm sure you guys have already seen like the summary table for the customers. And if the order fails, and they'll show you an error message. So that is what the condition is doing over here. And at the end, um, WooCommerce allows in, they insert two hooks for us to use. So in our case, we're looking at this one, WooCommerce underscore thank you, and then it passes the order ID. Okay, and this, how, are you, how can you utilize this hook? For example, that was, the, that was the do underscore action. So if we want to hook our, we want to use our custom function inside that hook, we have to use um, this function, add underscore action. So just now I was saying there's do action and add action. Do action is the hook, and add action allows you to add your um, function into that hook. So this add action takes in four parameters. One is, um, this is the name of the hook that you want to hook into, which is the same. So it must correspond with the, the name here. So Next is the name of the function, which we will be creating. And next we have the priority. So imagine if you, if you, if you create two custom functions, but, and you want to hook them into the same place. So how, do you, how does WordPress decide which one to run first? So that's where um, priority comes into the picture. So the function with the lower priority will get executed first. For example, if I want to insert um, a picture, 
and I want to insert, insert a picture and uh, some content, but I want the picture to be, to be above the content. So what you can do is to make this maybe priority 5 and then make the function that outputs the content to a priority higher than 5. And arguments over here, by default, it's, it's, um, it accepts one argument. So over here, if your hook provides you with one argument, then the number one will be used here. If your hook provides you with two arguments, and if you want to use both of them, then you can change the number to two. Okay, so this is how our custom function is going to look like. So um, this is the name of our custom function, which is the same as this one. And this is the argument that we're using, that the hook is providing, the order ID. Okay, so what we can do in this case is we can check. If the order ID is 888, with the ID 888, we can display this text out. Congratulations, you are our lucky winner. But if the order ID is not 888, we will display a sorry message. So this is your custom function. And the whole thing will look something like this. This is the function, and this is where you use your add action. So you can place this um, code snippet in your functions.php, or you can place it, you can create a plugin to, to, and put everything inside. And the output for this will be something like over here. So this is the, the typical um, WooCommerce thank you page. As you can see, because the order, the order number is not 888, it, it, it fails the condition. So at the bottom, because the, the do action hook is placed after the table, so our message, our function will, be, will get executed after the table, which is here. We are showing the sorry, um, better luck next time message. And okay, next we have filters. So filter, we are using apply filters and add filters. And the first, Argument is the same thing. It's the name of the filter we want to we want to hook into. In this case, we are using the thank you order receive text. And the next one, this is the default value of the uh, of the content. So in this case, it's showing this thank you the message thank you with an exclamation mark at the thank you um, at this page over here. It's showing this message in the thank you page. So what we can do with this is that if we want to change the thank you message, we can create a function and hook into this filter here. And how will that look like? So we use the add filter instead of add action because we are dealing with filters. So the first one is the name of the filter. So it must be the same as the one over here. And the next one is the same, um, the name of our custom function. And this also has priority and arguments as well. So how will this look like in the function? A very simple, um, so this too must be the same because this is the name of the function. And for uh, filters, I was saying, we have to always return something, right? So for all your filter functions, we have to have this um, argument inside. This represents the original data that we are using. So what this does is, it takes the original data. This, this value variable uh, represents the original data, which is the thank you message here. So what, we, what we're doing is we, we are taking this, that message and we're changing it to something like this. Thank you for your purchase. We hope you like the item. And at the end, the most important part, if, not, if, you, if you miss this out, um, you get an error. So the most important part is to return the value. So even if you don't change the value, for example, even if you, you, might, you might create some conditional statement over here. If, um, if the order ID is same, it's 888, we'll change it to this message. If not, we want to uh, return the default value. So we will just return this value without changing anything, and it's fine. As long as you return something, WordPress will just continue to um, process the, the rest of the code. Okay, and... This is how it looks like, um, not how the whole thing looks like. You're gonna, you can put this in your functions PHP or in a, in a plugin as well. So this is how it looks like on the thank you page. Uh, so previously, the default 
message was only thank you, but right now it's showing the filtered content. And just to summarize again, filter um, actions is all about doing something. Like what we showed, what we what we what we saw in the example is about ins uh, doing something. Uh, we ins we inserted some uh, content, inserted some text. You can insert pictures or whatever uh, at the bottom of your. I mean, in the footer or in your navigation, wherever there's a hook, action hook, it allows you to do something about it. And for future, uh, we are always changing to, um, data. We're always manipulating data. In the case of our thank you page, we're changing the thank you uh, message after the order is um, completed. And the, another difference is filters must always return a value. If not, the, the whole um, site will show some error. So even if you are not changing the, 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 the data, you still need to return something. And for actions, we're using do action and add action. And for filters, we're using apply filters and add uh, filter. OK, I think that's, um, <laughs> that's the end of uh, my talk. I hopefully, hopefully, that, hopefully you guys understand um, the concept of um, hooks and why is it so 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 important so useful so even if you're not a developer at least by now hopefully you will know uh, why is wordpress such an extendable system why it allows people to just come in and do so many things so when someone asks you why is wordpress so powerful at least you can tell them it's about hooks and that's all i have hopefully you guys learned something today <laughs> Yeah. Uh, where do we insert in WordPress these yeah. hooks? For example, in WordPress. Yeah. Okay. So, for example, um, if you want to create this function, you can insert it in um, the functions.php file inside your theme. But preferably, you have a child theme. So you always have a child theme. Okay. Can you can you show in WordPress what is it? Uh, okay. Let me see if I have a working example. <laughs> Um, I mean, ideally, it should be done via FTP rather than the actual. Oh yeah, definitely. You have to you have to FTP into your server, and then you go into the file directory. So, oh no, it's not showing here. Okay, so in a typical WordPress working directory, you have something like this: a theme folder, and then all your themes inside. So when you click onto when you click into each theme, there is this um, functions.php file over here. So what you can do is to uh, open this file and then insert your custom functions inside. But where, where? you can actually do it any part of the file. Where, where do we get examples of all these hooks? How do we know what to write? Uh, OK, let me just find mine. Sorry, I'm just very far from the. No, it's OK. <laughs> Let me try and make it clear. So when you open the functions.php file, this is for the 2019 theme. You can just scroll, you can just put the, the, your custom function anywhere. Usually I put it at the bottom. So just over here, and then you can just yeah, do your function and then create your own function and add the hook over there. But preferably you should, I don't know about, uh, I, I always create a shell theme when I do um, developments because when you create your functions, when you create, when you edit the functions PHP of the main theme, when you update the theme, all your functions will be erased. It's the same as um, updating why we don't update WordPress directly, why we don't update plugins directly. So what we usually do is to create a child theme. So that is another topic <laughs> by itself, but it's usually a good practice to create a child theme. And you're saying where can you find um, the list of hooks to, to, to look? Uh, let me see. So one place would definitely be the WordPress Codex. They have um, they have the list of hooks there, and I think there is this site that shows you this one. adambrown.info uh, so over here it shows you you can find all hooks and then all, 
including filters and um, actions. So it even shows you um, the version, whether this hook is still in use or it's, it's, uh, whether it has been deprecated or it's still active. So adambrown.info is a good place. And another one is, um, of course, the WordPress codex itself. I think they don't really list out the entire hooks over there. It's more like if you know, what to, if you know, if you know what hook you want to use, but you don't really know what it does or how many arguments it receives, and then you can search for that hook in the WordPress codex. For example, if I want to look for the, the hook safe underscore post, and then it brings you to this to the codex. So over here, it explains to you what this hook does. So this is this hook is fired when you save a post. Like what I mentioned just now, if you want to send out an email or a tweet after you, after you publish a post, you can use this hook. So this codex is good um, when it comes to explaining what the hooks does, but I don't think it shows you the complete list of um, hooks. Any other questions? Just, just to um, elaborate more on the codex, um, it shows, it's actually a documentation of um, all the hooks that are public for use, as in it's, it's, uh, it's not used internally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. correct. So um, it's usually we refer to the codex for um, the uh, documentation of these hooks. Uh, at the same time, uh, WordPress, it's, WordPress uh, itself is actually updating the the way that they are doing the documentation. Developers handbook, is it? Yes. So it's, uh, right now, it's on, uh, the, the updated version is on developers.wordpress.com. Uh, WordPress. Oh, is it? Yeah. I think it's developer. Oh, dev developer. Developer. Sorry. Yes, it's different. Yeah. So that is another thing. Yeah. So developer. 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 Dot. Is where they are console consolidating all the various um, development resources for any WordPress developers or even. Um, you scroll down, it will cover things like um, yeah, any any team developers, starting developers, or uh, even if you are designing um, Gutenberg blocks, which is a new uh, text editor that WordPress has. Uh, everything is all uh, being cons consolidated here. So at least right now, there's um, this one single source for you to find all your WordPress related um, information. So if you're looking to go into WordPress development, this is definitely one place you want to start. Um, it explains all the APIs it has, hooks, short codes, that kind of stuff. So your theme will have different hooks and actions and filters as well, depending on what theme you use and also what plugin. So if you're using WooCommerce and you wanted to move some areas around, um, you can do that as well. Yeah. For WooCommerce, for all, usually plugins, they have their own documentations of the themes they use. You will not be able to find it here because this is just the themes that you'll find in WordPress. Um, those plugins developers, they have their own documentations like WooCommerce has one um, where it explains to you the hooks that it uses. Any other questions? No? Okay, thank you then. <laughs>